Those are not the cars on the racetrack. Casey Huffman on the racetrack. I don't know that he is supposed to be out in this. That is Bobby Mercer. Bobby Mercer, the car's listed as 14 on the lineup, 13 on the track, but number one in your heart, Greg. <laughs> I know that was coming. Because it's corny, and I love corny. Green flag out for the first time this year. Under stock division. Rumpy and Schwedick down into turn number one. Schwedick on the outside with a smoother line off of turn number two. Look at Ryan Denny in that number eight. He's up to the third spot. Billy Bleach fourth. Whoa, Crumby gets sideways contact with Ryan Denny. As it's three wide behind him, Crumby, Hoskins, and Miller. That's the battle for the fourth spot. Billy Bleach goes into turn number three on the high side. He'll drive at a four on the bottom of the racetrack and as Ryan Denny climbs the banking. Billy Bleach drives by for the second position. So we already saw something here tonight that we did not see much of last year. And that was Ryan Denny being passed on the racetrack. In that battle right now for second with Bleach, just to the outside of him. Wow, the rear end really kicked around the Ryan Denny. As Hoskins will reel him. And these cars, more than any, I think, will venture down into the moat on the inside of the racetrack and try different things. Halfway through for Logan Schwedick in that black and green number 53, Bill Bleach running in the second position. We've got a battle for third. Rob Hoskins trying to make a move on Ryan Denny down into turn one. Out just a bit, and then he had to get on the binders in corner number three. Hoskins will look to the outside as Ryan Denning brings it down on the bottom. Miller right there as well in that 93, so that's a fantastic three-car battle. And as we say that, Ryan Denning closer to the top two than he is the next two, as it looks like a problem for Lowenberg up in turn number four. What a great job being done by the uh, technical crew tonight, eh? The, the video crew and what do you call it? The director or the producer that switches things up? Those people. You're brilliant, Greg Two Calvin. Camera angles. Producer? Producer? Darren says it's the producer. I thought you were the producer, Darren. You're the in tower producer. Maestro. Maestro. Fresh West. Single file for the restart. Logan Schwedick leads the way. Billy Bleach in second in that X. Ryan Denny in the eight. Rob Hoskins in the 37. They bunch up nose to tail. Green is in the air. Schwedick gets on the loud pedal. We're back underway with five laps complete. Bleach looks down low in corner number one. He brings Denning alongside. Oh, Schwedick bounces the nose of that car. And here comes Bleach down to the inside. Makes a look at it here in third. Side by side coming to the two to go signal. You don't always get to see where they get back on the throttle, but did you see that, Greg? They tried to pitch it into three and then hard on the gas, and away he went to get the advantage off of four. Let's see if we notice it again, but he gets on it so early, really able to power himself off the corner. And we couldn't really tell him. Not that time, but the white flag will come out for Logan Schwedick, and none of those, one of those drivers that Here comes Bleach, the veteran, down the inside line. He'll take the lead, showed a little bit of smoke there in two. A little bit of smoke indeed. Schwedick, though, three and four is where he was better. He gets a great run into the corner. They rub off a turn number four. Schwedick to the win. Bleach second, Ryan Denning third, Miller in fourth. Mercer rounds up the top five, and then it's Hoskins and Crumby. Logan Schwedick, when you can hold off Ryan Denning and Billy Bleach, you've done something, and he picks up the win. Good job by Logan Schwedek, driver of Vancaster. Second qualifying heat for the Me uh, Middleport Mechanical. Keaton's got to get himself a ride in a crate sprint. I think he'd be good in a crate sprint car. All the laps of itch boys would.
Green flag set to fly out of turn number four. Christopher Hale and Dave Bailey on the front row in this beautiful field of Thunderstock heats. Green is out, we're underway. Hale in his second full season in the Thunderstock division with the champ on the outside of going door to door down the back stretch. Bailey up top. Christopher Hale not giving an inch though. He worked Bailey over there, didn't give him all the racetrack that he wanted. He's still up on the rear corner, man. Trevor DeBoer with a good start. He's up there on the mountain for third, and Jim Lampman rocketed from the back of the field to round out the top five. Mark Bazine right there has got a head of steam on Trevor DeBoer going into corner number three. He's in that white and orange 21X. DeBoer will hold him off, and here comes Lampman on that bottom side. Almost four wide through turn number four deeper in the field. Blake Bombery trying to get out of the back of the pack, which is where he started in that black and purple number 24. But at the front, we've got great battles for position as Mark Bazin climbs up the banking as Jim Lampman works the bottom. Phenomenal as we see Hale and DeBoer and Lampman all going at it for that runner-up spot. Second, third, fourth, and fifth right together. Jim Lampman doesn't care about the bumps. He's driving through all the holes out there. If it feels fast, that's where he's at. That orange number 28. Working over the back end of Trevor DeBoer. DeBoer's got different ideas. Drives to the inside of Christopher Hale. Takes over the second spot. Dave Bailey. Setting sail out in front, the Queenston Chevrolet, car number 49. The door right there in second spot, trying to hold off. Lampman design and Christopher Hale. Lampman about as low as you can go without hitting the implement tires. Blake Bomber, he's worked his way up to the sixth position. He's got a long way to go, just two laps remaining. As well, look at this battle for third. A uh, bit of racing going on in the back as well. The deliverance machine and Jay Dewar back there with Kevin Pulse. That was almost an issue. As look at those three battling for third still as the white flag comes out. Dave Bailey with the white flag in the air. One more lap to go. Christopher Hale still holding on to that third position. But look at Jim Lampin and Mark Bazine. The DeBoer has pulled his way out of this battle and the point is for third. Lampin on the bottom, Hale on the outside. Mark Bazine waiting for them to create an opening. As the win will go to Dave Bailey, Trevor DeBoer is gonna grab second, but who is going to be third? They come off of turn number four. Christopher Hale takes third. Lampin edges Mark Bazine for fourth. So Lampin in that orange 28. Mark Bazine in the white 21. Blake Bombery finishes sixth. Jay Dewar seventh. Nick Liverance eighth. Chase has ninth, and rounding out the top 10, Kevin Paul's in that number 46. I just want to give a shout to Christopher Hale. I was in filling in for Brighton last week, as you guys were mentioning earlier, and Hale ran to a third place finish last night, a one, uh, last week, in a one off at in Brighton. And RK. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now does Jim Lampman's car have a light on the roof? Clint would probably know this. Yes. Well, Donnie's does, but does Jim? Oh. One of them's got to get rid of the light, because here's Donnie Lampman. And I want to be able to tell the two of them apart when they're on the racetrack together. I don't recall. Or at least have a different colored light. Yeah, different colored light would work as well. We're about to go green on a turn number four, the final qualifier for the Thunderstock division. Cars out here in this qualifying heat. Great paint schemes to start off the 2018 season. Among the best, that car number one out in front. Chris Dickey leading the way over Jason Lungaro. The battle right now is for third as it's Sergeant and Teeple side by side. And I'm watching three cars. I'm watching Kenny Sergeant, the 25 leader, and the 200 leader from the 84. All three of them are just kind of slyly working the bottom of the racetrack. Now Lee slid up just a little bit, but in the opening of that race, they all made tracks just down at the bottom. Lee is no stranger to the Thunderstock division, although getting back to it after a couple of years off, running that sprint car, he should be a factor, I would think, all year long in that car number two. He'll be stout for sure as Ryan Beagle looking to make his way around. He's working the inside of Lee Winger. Lee Winger trying to make a move on Brian Teeple. We are 
under yellow, Devin Bacher has rolled to a stop in turn number four. Sixth all time on the Thunderstock win list is Lee Winger. He's got 12 wins. So again, don't be surprised if we see him back in victory lane in this division. Hopefully they find this class a little bit more manageable than the sprint car. Without looking, who's the winningest all-time Thunderstock driver? Without looking, the winningest all-time Thunderstock driver. Blake Bombery. Do I get to play? Go ahead. Play. Ryan Dinning? No, he's second and he's only one win back. AJ Lewis? Yes. There's okay. your winner, AJ Lewis. I was trying to think of all those years where yeah. it was a small class because Bombery's been racing forever. But yeah, AJ Lewis was the top. Leading the way, Jason Lungaro, who's come into his own as well in this Thunderstock division, battling alongside Ken Sargent. So you go down in a corner at number three, and Ryan Beagle has very smoothly worked his way from the back of the pack, challenging now for that third spot. Man, did he ever run the inside? Kenny Sargent probably thought he was running the extreme bottom, and then here goes the 84 to his inside. Second, third, and fourth, duking it out. That's Kenny Sargent in the 25. Ryan Beagle in the 84, and Longaro in the seven. Go down on the halfway signal, four and four to go. Leader Chris Hickey looking stealthy in that Monte Carlo. Then you've got Camaro's behind him. Ryan Beagle back there in the mix as well. As he's to the outside of the seven of Longaro battling for third. The nose of uh, Ryan Beagle's car last time into turn three dug in, and I thought he was going to go end over end. Chris Dickey holding on to that 10 car length advantage over Kenny Sargent. He might be pulling away a little bit as a beautiful sunset over the back straightaway here. Two laps left to go for Chris Dickey. Pretty smooth there through one and two, so Beagle still a few car lengths back. Chris Dickey gonna roll through three and four. Checkered flag in the air. Chris Dickey takes the heat race win. Kenny Sargent second, Ryan Beagle third, Longero in fourth. And leaving around to the top five. Frazier and Donnie Lamb, and that will conclude qualifying for the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstock Division as we get ready for three qualifying heats for the Action Sprint Tour presented by RaceRivals.com. Two, four, 72, 38, 65, seven, and 12. If you have any of those numbers, come to the tower to claim your prize courtesy of Ackland Insurance. Programs 11, 2, 75, 69, 80, and 39 all go to the main entry. Donnie Lampman out there with Nick Liverance. Liverance works around the outside of Lampman and into the lead. And everybody going to qualify for the feature event. They're just racing for the starting order. That's why they've drawn it back to a six lap event. Seven X didn't see them. I don't believe they were out at all last year. Jason is dead. They're running in that third position. Just ahead of Terry Martin in the 38. Man, that's a nice looking race car for Aaron Rewoodski, that poor machine. Yeah, moving up from the mini stock division and a sharp. Love the blue wheels. Side 
by side. Down the back stretch, Lampman gets the run. Two laps to go, Liverens all by himself out in front, but a great battle between Hess and Lampman for second. Hess in the red 777, Lampman in the 28 orange machine. And then Terry Martin having some fun trying to hold off Aaron Rewitzki in the four. So a couple of good battles there as the white flag flies for Liverence. It's been a long time since I've watched the Thunderstocks. Love this class of cars at this racetrack, Greg Callan. Full field of cars. Lee Winger going to hang back on the start. Not sure if he's got a problem or a premonition. <laughs> we'll find out. Double greens in the air. And Logan Schwedek and Jason Schwedek with the advantage, rolled off a of turn two. Chris Dickey with a good start. He'll roll to the outside of Kenny Sargent down the back straightaway. Lee Winger just coasting down into turn one, so possibly just taking the green for money and points. No, oh, he's, he's getting up to speed. to get to the inside of Ken Sargent. It's almost like Sargent realized he got into three a little bit hot, couldn't hold it down, and he turned that car hard left to pinch off Dave Bailey. Bailey not going to be denied, though. Still working the inside groove as the top two pull away. The battle up front is the best one on the track as it's Dave Bailey and Ken Sargent. Bailey looks to the inside. Now he's going to give a bump to Ken Sargent through turn two. Sargent holding on to the bottom. I think he knows that's his ticket right now. He's got to stay down there. And if Bailey can beat him on the outside, so be it. But he's going to make him go the long way. off the pace, gets out of harm's way to the infield. Out in front is Dave Bailey stretching it out about five car lengths as he works the inside of Terry Martin down the back straightaway into turn three to put Martin a lap there. Ryan Beagle now to the inside of Logan Schwedek for turn four. He'll take over that position. Bailey 
Bailey. Three wide up the middle around Bobby Mercer and Donnie Lampman. So he's not holding back, that's for sure. Like Bobber, something to miss there in the 24. He went way up the racetrack. Another car up the track. 52 is here for Tony Fraser. He's got a gag of the race car. Bearing down the back of that race car. Jim Lampman now moves up the group. No, oh, that's Donnie Lampman. I'm sorry. as well in that X machine. Four cars duking it out in the dust. Coming down the front straightaway, Ryan Beagle gets really loose off a of turn four, loses some ground. Dave Bailey working through three and four. He's going to see the white flag in the air. going to victory lane as Dave Bailey picks up the win, the Middleport Mechanical Thunderstock feature event. We'll talk to him at the end of the night, but it looks like we're going to do the 50-50 draw. Darren, do you want to pick one? 